This is Local 15 Today. Breaking overnight, a confession and two arrests have been made in the murder of Delana Powell Anderson. What happened that night? I ain't gonna say too much on the news, cause that ain't for the news to hear. But you know something, right? Well, I, know, Betty, I know what happened. You know what happened? I know what happened. So you know who did it? Yeah, I know who did. But he did say a lot. Powell was shot and killed the morning of October 18th while on her way to work. Following her death, police and city leaders offered thousands of dollars in rewards, begging anyone with information to come forward. And this morning, justice for Delana Powell has begun. Good morning, everyone. I'm Darwin Singleton. And I'm Kelly Foster. We thank you for joining us for Local 15 today. Breaking overnight, police arrest 16-year-old Israel Hall and 18-year-old Antonio Lang in the murder of 24-year-old Delana Powell Anderson. Delana was shot multiple times on the morning of October 18th. Police say she was on her way to work and at a stop sign on the I-10 service road at Duval Street when she was attacked by gunfire. Local 15 was at police headquarters last night when the arrests were made. Our Local 15's Katie Herrera joins us live from police headquarters. And Katie, police arrested two suspects charged last night in Delana's death, but one of those suspects had a lot to say. Hey, good morning, Kelly and Darwin. That's right. Hall and Lang have both been formally charged in the death of Delana. Now, Hall is facing charges of felony murder, while Lang is being charged with capital murder. During last night's perp walk, as you mentioned, Kelly, our crews were pretty shocked that 16-year-old Hall had a lot to say, even admitting and confessing to his involvement in the crime. Take a listen to everything he had to say. Do you know Delana? I know her, not personally. Anything to say? Anything to say. The person that did, he know he did. It's wrong that he doing this. You know anything about what it? What happened that night? What happened that night? I ain't gonna say too much on the news, cause that, that ain't for the news to hear. But you know something, right? Well, I, know, that, I know what happened. You know what happened? I know what happened. So you know who did it? Yeah, I know who did it. No, I'm gonna say who did it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say who did it now. I'm gonna go all the way through and through. Do you have anything to say to her family, Delana's family? I, I apologize. I apologize. It wasn't meant for her. I ain't kill your daughter. Were you there when it happened? I was there, but I ain't killed her. So you were there. And you're not gonna say who did it? The other person did. The guy that's about to walk out after you? Yep. Why'd you do why'd he do it? I swear to God. Why'd he do it? On my people to the grave. Did he know she he had did. a daughter? He knew it. He did it. He did it. What was the reason for it? I don't know. He was supposed to just be a robbery. Were y'all expecting her to be there? No. It wasn't meant for him. He just did it. Did you try to stop him? I was What That's took you so long to come forward? It took me so long to come forward. I was scared of myself. You scared of the other guy? I'm scared of him. I'm scared of this. Yeah. Why'd he do it? why he do it? I don't know. You got to ask him that. I knew it was supposed to be a robbery. I agree. I ain't finna lie to you. I agreed on stealing a car. I ain't agreed on killing nobody. Why'd you shoot her? What'd she do? He shot her. What did she say to make him shoot her? She ain't say nothing. He just did. So there you have it, 16-year-old Israel Hall admitting that he and 18-year-old Antonio Lang were planning to steal a car, but Hall is saying that Lang was the one who pulled the trigger. Now, Lang did not have as much to say when he came out, only apologizing to Delana's family for what happened. Do you have anything to say to her family? I'm sorry. Now, Lang was formally charged in the death of Delana Powell last night, but according to the Mobile County Jail Log, he has been in jail twice in the past two months. On October 31st, Lang was arrested and charged with carrying a pistol without a permit, and on November 13th, he was arrested and charged with third-degree robbery. Now, Mobile Police did tell us they were able to make these arrests thanks to tips and information coming in from the community, but they weren't able to give us many specifics about the case. Reporting live at MPD headquarters, I'm Katie Herrera, Local 15 News. All right. All right, thank you, Katie. Now, if you remember about a week after Delana's death, Mobile Police released a statement saying they had surveillance video showing two, sus two suspects walking toward the intersection where she was gunned down. Now, during last night's perp walk, MPD spokesperson Terrence Perkins was asked 
if that video was linked to the two suspects who are now in custody and he resp responded by saying he could not get into that, but that investigators are thankful for the, vi the video they received. During the investigation into Delana's death, Mobile Police and Representative Napoleon Bracey Jr. offered thousands of dollars in rewards for any information leading to an arrest of a suspect. Mobile Police offered a $5,000 reward and Bracey opened a GoFundMe account promising to give whoever came forward with information leading to an arrest all of the money collected in that account. This morning, the funds in that account stand at over $1,500. However, it has not been confirmed whether anyone came forward with any information leading to these arrests, nor if any money has been awarded. Local 15 is digging back to when this incident first began. The morning of October 18th, a call came in of a traffic accident on Interstate 10 near Michigan Avenue, and we brought you that is breaking news that morning on Local 15 today. Now you are looking at the traffic cam video from that morning. Later, it was confirmed that this was more than a traffic accident. In fact, the results of Delana's murder. As we said earlier, Delana was shot and killed on the I-10 service road near Duval Street. Police say Delana was then able to flee, driving onto the I-10 interstate where she was, then she succumbed to her gunshot wounds and that's where she wrecked at Michigan Avenue. Those who knew Delana describe her as hardworking, passionate, a makeup artist, entrepreneur, and most importantly, a mother of a five-year-old daughter. We spoke to one of Delana's close friends who says she was always full of life. All Delana did was go to work, do makeup, and take care of her daughter. That was her sidekick. That was her daughter was her biggest fan. She was like very bright. She was the most sparkly person here. Um, she just brought light into everyone. Family members tell us that just three days after her martyr, Delana would have celebrated her 25th birthday. MPD spokesperson Terrence Perkins has additional details surrounding the investigation into Delana's death, as well as the arrest of Israel Hall and Antonia Lang will be released at a later time. Local 15 will be sure to bring you all that information as it comes in to us. A Washington officer who was shot several times by a suspect has died. And as we speak, police are in a standoff with that suspect in the shooting. The shooting happened Wednesday night in Tacoma, Washington. Police say the officer was responding to a domestic disturbance when the suspect opened fire. That officer was taken to the hospital where he fought for his life before losing that fight late Wednesday night. Our officer was pronounced dead at the hospital. We've suffered a great loss and I think the community has suffered a great loss and I, I don't know how to put that into words other than to say that this is the first officer to die in the line of duty in Tacoma since 1997. The rain that the state of Alabama received this week was not enough to lift the statewide burn ban. Governor Robert Bentley posted a tweet saying Wednesday the burn ban remains in place and that the burn ban will be reassessed next week after the state is expected to get more rain over the weekend. Now the state of Alabama received two to five inches of much needed rain this week, but that is still 10 to 15 inches below normal and meteorologist Jake Dunn's been tracking the storms and we're clear though for now Jake huh yeah clear and quiet right now in fact much colder some 30 to 35 degrees colder than it was just 24 hours ago but we've got a tame forecast through tomorrow and we're going to track that next weather maker for you up after the break meteorologist Jake Dunn what a difference 24 hours wow. makes. We're yeah. 30, almost 30 yeah. degrees cooler. And yeah. wetter. And yeah. wetter, the important thing is we finally got some really good soaking rain. Got the rain and dodged the severe weather for the most part here right. in the Mobile area. But then the cooler weather built in and now it's here to stay. In fact, we've got a nice forecast later today and tomorrow, but we need more rain. Good news, it's on the way, not this morning. Light pinpoint Doppler radar shows some leftover showers there. The Big Bend of Florida, that is our storm system exiting the area in its wake. It's a cooler forecast and a dry one. How about this? No real risk of rain today nor tomorrow, but bad timing here as we head back into the weekend. Our next weather maker rolls in. However, we still need, as you heard a little bit ago, a ton more rain, maybe 10 to 12 inches. Of course, you don't want it all at once. It would just run off, so we needed to get it in phases, and that's kind of the theory over the next several days. So our rain max is Sunday at 80%.
We'll get more rainfall as we head into Monday as well. Rainfall over the past day, another half inch to an inch of rainfall. So most spots two to four inches of rain this week. We're going to get that two day break before things turn around this weekend. Pinpoint predictor the story this morning, the cold and the breeze. Now it's not as windy as it's been, not even close, but we have this north wind out there and it is giving us a chill factor this morning in the low to mid 30s. Definitely want the coat. It is the first day of December and it feels like it. Cloud free sky today, tonight, and again on Friday, we may see a few high thin clouds tomorrow, but overall we're going to call it mostly sunny today and tomorrow before that storm system starts to peak its way in here by the weekend. So today starting in the low 40s, but feeling like the 30s sunshine and 60 at noon. We're in the mid 60s at 3 o'clock and then of course sunset today 451, one of our earliest sunsets of the year and into the upper 50s by 5. Here's your seven day forecast couple of uh, beauties today and tomorrow. We'll see some showers on Saturday. If you've got to get something done outside this weekend, Saturday morning is your best bet. Saturday afternoon, it showers. It's soaking rain and storms on Sunday. Another batch on Monday. Then we'll dry things out as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, keeping with that theme, wicked weather took over the southeast Tuesday into Wednesday. This morning, five people dead as a result of those storms. The latest coming up. Dale, as we take a look at I-10 Bay Way, it looks clear right now at 517. Severe storm hammered the south Tuesday and Wednesday, but this morning those storms have shifted east. This deadly system that spawned tornadoes in Alabama and Tennessee has now exited the southeast. Five deaths are confirmed as a result of this system. A water spout turned tornado came on land and moved through the Florida Panhandle Wednesday afternoon. Take a look. Tornado was captured on cell phone video as it moved through the city of Destin. The Destin tornado was captured on video by Annie Belter, she says she's lived in Destin for 19 years, never seen a tornado before Wednesday. Wild weather also blew through Georgia. You can see all the debris swirling in the air in Atlanta's Buckhead neighborhood, which is just north of downtown Atlanta. The heavy band of rain and storms drenched the area, bringing down large trees. No word yet on any injuries. And what a difference a day makes. We did need the rain. We didn't get a lot of it, but now it's dry and there's a chill in the air this morning. Yeah, the problem that rain just came with the severe weather. I mean, especially upstate, we certainly needed the moisture, but it just came with wind and tornadoes and hail in some spots. Yeah, we missed most of it. We were expecting it. We were under a watch most of the day yesterday, at least the first part of the morning, but it just kind of went all to the uh, north and to yeah, the east. Yeah, really you need the storms to hit during kind of the heat of the afternoon mm -hmm. to get to their full potential. So they came through here just a little bit too early course got rougher off to our east yeah. and northeast, yeah. but and we'll take it. We'll take it. The yeah. system really kind of sped up too. Once it kind of hit the Gulf Coast, it seemed to gas uh, and said, I want to yeah, get <laughs> off the east coast as fast as I can. But we have some more rain in the forecast. Yeah, not uh, today or tomorrow, but this weekend we've got some rainfall coming our way this morning. The story is the temperature drop evergreen 39 36 in Hattiesburg forecast today near normal numbers. It's December. Welcome to the last month of the year. Average highs are right around 65 and you can see most areas including Citronelle, Robertsdale and Foley will be right in that genre. Same story in Northwest Florida, a little bit warmer. Fort Walton 67, a pair of sixes for Navarre, 65 in Milton and 65 in Bruton. Bus stop forecast. Kiddos, grab the coats this morning. You'll certainly need them. We're in the low 40s, but it will feel like the upper 30s and it's definitely December today. Sunshine and 64. We're 67 tomorrow and then 62 on Saturday as that next storm system rolls in. We'll have a more in-depth look of that coming up. It is the first day of December along the Gulf Coast. There she is, the tree at Rockefeller Center, all lit up this morning.
It is the first day of December and Christmas is almost here. And there are ways you can help all age groups this holiday season. This year, the Salvation Army's Angel Tree Program has more than 2,500 children. Hundreds are still available. But if you can't make it to a tree location, new this year, you can pick an angel online. People can go on there, click on Adopt an Angel. They can choose the gender of the child. They can choose the age of the child and it will come up with choices. Great idea, the deadline, December 9th. You can also be a Santa to a senior. The group is often forgotten. Home Instead Senior Care has trees set up at businesses in Mobile and Baldwin counties. It works just like the Angel Tree Program. You pull a senior from the tree, get their items, and then return them to the business. They're put into a, a bag that a lot of the school children in our area decorate for Christmas as their art project while they're in school and they open their bag up and start reaching in, just pulling out items and you see their faces light up. Oh, we love our seniors. They are our treasures. To find out where angel trees and senior trees are set up, go to local15tv.com and look for the Santa to Senior story. Here's a live look at traffic this morning. East and west over the Bayway. It's going to be smooth sailing. We'll be back.